Frozen smiles. Moments of happiness captured forever, just before the darkness descended. These haunting last photos whisper of chilling fates and secrets lost to time. Unseen tragedies lurk within their cheerful facades. Are you ready to confront the disturbing stories behind the final moments and the unsettling questions they leave unanswered? Prabhu Batara. Prabhu Batara was a taxi driver in India that got mauled to death by a bear after trying to take a selfie with it. He was driving some passengers home from a wedding when he spotted a bear by the side of the road. He got out, leaving the passengers in the car, promising he would only be a few minutes. The bear was injured and trying to drink water from a pond. When he got too close to it, the bear attacked. He got pulled to the ground and clawed at. The photos you see here are photos people took of the incident at as it happened. Now people did go to his rescue, but were afraid for their own life. So they tried to scare off the bear by throwing rocks and sticks at it. But in the end, this enraged the bear even more. He passed away minutes after these photos were taken. Moving on to number 9 we have David Johnston. David Johnston was a 31 year old volcanoologist that fell victim to a volcano explosion on May 18th, 1980. 13 hours before his death, this photo was taken of him. That was the very spot that he was killed. So on that day, it was Johnston's shift to keep an eye on Mount St. Helen, the mountain where the explosion occurred. He was six miles away from the volcano. That morning, the eruption came fast and without warning. As it was erupting, he signaled to the base saying, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. Shortly after he radioed that, he was killed by a lateral blast from the volcano. Sadly, his body was never found. All that was left were remnants of his trailer. Now, it breaks my heart seeing that photo. Just look how happy he looks. Little did he know that 13 hours later, that would be it. And at number eight, we have the dangerous selfie. Taking selfies any and everywhere is kind of the new norm, but you would never think that a selfie would be deadly. Sadly, you'd be mistaken. Back in March of 2017, best friends Nizia Mendoza Corral and Clarissa Morquicho Miranda were taking selfies on an airstrip when they were hit and killed by an oncoming plane. The two were standing in the back of a van when this happened, but they were warned not to do so. They took this photo, and moments later, they were hit by a wing of a plane that they didn't see coming. They passed away instantly. Now, when you look at this photo, it just feels so dark, knowing seconds later the girls lost their lives. Coming in at number seven, we have the extreme selfie. 26 year old Wu Yongning was known for his extreme selfies. He was considered a rooftopper, which means he would stand on high buildings or structures or other precarious places and take photos and videos doing so. He made a living doing this, and he would do so with no harness, net, or safety equipment. This photo was one of the last photos he ever took. That was before November of 2017 when he died after falling off of a 62 story building. He was doing this as part of a contest to win 100,000 yuan, but this would be the last of his dangerous stunts. He climbed up to the top of that building that day with the hopes of winning that prize. He never thought it would end the way that it did. Coming in at number 6 we have Gary Slock. This selfie is of Gary Slock and his mother aboard their flight. Little did they know the horrors that would soon await. They were both excited for their vacation to Malaysia. The trip was designed for single parents and their children. Sadly, three hours after that photo was taken, a missile shot down the plane as it flew over eastern Ukraine. There were no survivors. The two were so excited for their trip. They referred to it as their dream holiday. Again, just look how happy the two were. This breaks my heart. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the deadly Tinder date. A lot of people use the dating app Tinder, but there have been a number of Tinder horror stories of dates going terribly wrong, including this one. This is Cindy Loof. This is also the last photo of Cindy. Cindy was very excited to meet up with her Tinder date, Audrey, but Audrey wasn't who she said she was. She was actually a girl named Bailey Boswell. The two had already gone out the night before on November 14th, 2017. On that day, she sent a message to Bailey asking if it was only going to be the two of them. Previously, she had gone on dates with other women who would try to bring a male along for some extra fun. But Bailey reassured her it was only going to be them. 
On November 15th, on their second date, Bailey brought her boyfriend along. Bailey then convinced Sydney to participate in some acts with the two. This led to them playing a game in which Sydney was choked to death. So the last photo of Sydney was her all excited for her date which would later take her life. In our fourth spot, we have Anne Faber. On the evening of September 29th, 2017, Anne Faber went out for a bike ride by herself. By 6.50 p.m., she got caught in the rain and sent this selfie to her boyfriend. An hour later, her boyfriend reached out to her, but by then, it was too late. Anne had already been kidnapped. Her body was found two weeks later in the woods. That was the last photo Anne ever took, and also the last photo of her. Moving on, number three, we have the stowaway. At 14 years of age, Keith Sapsford was sent to a Catholic residential school. He hated it so much that he fled, heading to the Sydney airport with hopes of stowing away on an airplane headed to Japan. But his plan took a deadly turn. On February 22nd of 1970, he snuck into the airport and climbed into the airplane's wheel compartment. He waited there safely for the plane to take off. Sadly, when the plane was 200 feet in the air, the plane wheels retracted and he fell 200 feet to his death. At this time, a photographer named John Gilpin was taking pictures at the airport when he saw the boy falling from the sky. He managed to capture this photo. That was the last photo ever taken of Keith. Literally, you see him falling from the sky, it's creepy. In our second spot, we have Japan Airlines Flight 123. This photo was recovered from Japan Airlines Flight 123, the flight that ended up in disaster with the plane crashing and 520 people dying. This incident is said to be one of the deadliest single plane crashes in the history. Only four passengers survived. On August 12th, 1985, the plane took off at 6.12 p.m. and was scheduled to arrive at Osaka one hour later. But during the flight, the pilot had trouble controlling the plane, and they began to lose altitude quickly. This photo was taken as that was happening. You can see the oxygen masks drop down as a result. After failing to gain control of the plane, it crashed into Mount Takamagahara. This is the last photo of almost everyone on board. And in our number one spot, we have Regina K. Walters. Back in 1991, Regina K. Walters and her boyfriend ran off together. Later, they were picked up by a man named Robert Ben Rhodes. He was known as the truck stop killer. He was a serial killer that murdered over 50 women. Regina K. Walters was his last victim. This photo is of Regina after being abducted by Robert. He forced her to cut her hair and made her wear that dress and the heels you see in the photo. He then proceeded to take a number of photos of her, including this one in which she looks terrified for her own life. These photos were taken in an abandoned farmhouse, where her body was later found. So the last photos of Regina were taken by her killer in the place she died. What gets me the most is the look in her eyes. She looks terrified, as anyone would be in her situation. Then we had the helicopter crash. In 2019, 32-year-old Benno Anthony Penna and his wife, Megan Michelle Hawk Penna, went out for a helicopter ride in Utah. Their plan was to fly to South Valley Region Airport in West Jordan. Their ET was 2 p.m. When the pair failed to arrive, helicopters were sent out looking for them. Shortly before 6.30 p.m. that day, their helicopter was found. Sadly, they had crashed. This photo was posted just a few minutes before the deadly crash. Look how happy the pair look. Little did they know what was soon to happen. Now, authorities don't know for sure what happened, but it was reported that there was some heavy weather in the area that day. So maybe that's what played a role in the crash. It's a very tragic story. In our ninth spot, we have The Drowning. On November 11, 2017, fans of the Filipino TV star and dancer Franco Hernandez were heartbroken when they heard the news of his passing. On that day, he was out with his girlfriend and some friends on a small boat. This photo was taken that day just before a wave hit their boat, knocking everyone overboard into the water. Sadly, Franco drowned. The people operating the boat did manage to pull him and his girlfriend back onto the boat, but by that time, he was already unconscious. He was immediately brought to a clinic, but was declared dead on arrival. 
This is so sad because everyone was out enjoying their day, having fun. Little did they know what was going to happen. Moving on to number eight, we have the day the music died. February 3rd, 1959 is also referred to as the day the music died. Because on that day, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and JP Richardson died in a plane crash. The three had been on tour together. That day, they boarded the plane and were headed out to the next stop on their tour. But the three men and their pilot never made it. Now the thing is, the trio had been taking a tour bus for the first half of the tour, but they said it was unreliable and freezing cold. So being fed up, they decided to take a charter plane. Had they continued on with the tour bus, they would have made it there alive. This photo was taken of the three artists right before they hopped on the plane. It's the last photo of them. Apparently the pilot was unaware of a weather advisory that had been issued before takeoff. A short while after liftoff, the plane ran into troubles and crashed. Apparently the scene of the crash was very gruesome. The three artists had been thrown from the plane in the crash. The pilot was trapped inside of the cockpit. Coming in at number 7, we have the cliff jumping. Several years ago, naval air crewman Shannon Nunez decided to take a celebratory jump at a popular cliff jumping spot in Hawaii. She was celebrating her recent qualifications as a naval air crewman. Jumping off this cliff was quite common in the area, but it's also very dangerous. The cliff is roughly 80 feet high. She took this photo before her jump. Little did she know what was going to happen. When she jumped, she ended up landing sideways. She then started to panic and drowned. Her two friends that were with her tried to save her, but it was far too late. She was so excited for this jump. She was so proud of herself and her accomplishments. It's just sad that it had to end this way for her. Coming in at number six, we have the falling rock. This photo features a group of individuals who went out hiking. Little did they know what was going to happen a few moments later. Literally minutes after this photo was taken, a rock above fell and hit the man on the far right in the red shirt. It crushed him completely. He was dead upon impact. All his friends witnessed this happen to him and that must have been traumatizing. Like it was such a freak accident. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Burning Man Festival. The Burning Man Arts and Music Festival is an annual festival that takes place in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada. Tens of thousands of people gather from all over the world for it. Its main attraction is this big effigy that is then lit on fire. Well, during the festival in 2017, a man named Aaron Joel Mitchell ran right into the burning structure. He was burnt alive. To this day, his family does not know why he did this. He was not depressed, nor was he having thoughts of taking his own life. On top of that, a toxicology report showed that he did not have any alcohol or drugs in his system. But Aaron decided to dodge security and then run straight into the flames. Firefighters tried to stop him, but they were unsuccessful. When they did retrieve his body, it was far too late. This is the last photo ever taken of him. It's the moment he took his own life by running straight into the flames. In our fourth spot today, we have the birthday murder. On December 17th, 2017, 21-year-old Ismael Gutierrez and his friends went out for dinner to celebrate his 21st birthday. This photo was taken at his birthday celebration. Gutierrez is the young man holding the bottle. Later that night at around 3 a.m. he had been shot along with a random female. The group had been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Gutierrez and the woman were both taken to the hospital but sadly he did not make it. And the fact that this happened on his birthday when he just wanted to have a good time makes it 10 times sadder. In our third spot we have the cabin fire. A couple of years ago, Bethany and her friends decided to go to a cottage. They spent the day out on the lake and then had a nice barbecue dinner. This photo was taken of Bethany out enjoying her time at the cabin. Sadly, six hours after this photo was taken, Bethany lost her life. An ember from the grill sparked a fire on the cabin deck. Soon, the whole cabin went up in flames. All the friends were able to escape except for Bethany and a dog. This is why you hug your friends and family extra tight. It's sad, but you never know when their last day will be. In our second spot, we have Cameron Boyce. On July 6, 2019, Disney fans were shocked when they heard that the talented child actor Cameron Boyce had passed away in his sleep. He was taken from us way too soon. He was only 20 when he passed, and he had a bright future ahead of him. Now, Cameron passed away in his sleep due to a seizure which was brought on from an ongoing medical condition for which he was being treated for. Still, no one saw this coming. This photo was one of the last photos ever taken of Cameron. A beautiful photo of a beautiful soul. And in our number one spot today, we have the armed robbery. 
On September 21st, 2009, Angela Escobar and Alex Santiago were sleeping peacefully when an armed robber entered their home and shot them both dead. The robber proceeded to grab some personal belongings before fleeing the scene of the crime. This is the last photo of Angelina. What a beautiful and innocent soul, taken far too soon. Eventually though, the killer was caught. His name is Christopher Dobring. He was caught after taking a phone call in jail. On the recorded call, he admitted to shooting both Angelina and Alex, and then said, and I quote, I have no sympathy at all, I can do that again. That don't bother me. That just makes me sick to my stomach. Rest in peace, Angelita and Alex. Starting off this countdown, we have the plot to kill. This photo was taken of Thomas Bart Whittaker on the left and his younger brother Kevin on the right, just hours before Thomas planned to have his family killed. So apparently the two brothers were just goofing off and their mother wanted to take a photo of them. Then later, they went out for dinner as like a little celebration for Thomas completing his exams, which was a lie. Anyways, while they were at the restaurant, Thomas had had his friend enter his home and retrieve a gun and stage a burglary. He then waited at the front door for Thomas's family to return home. Once they did, he shot Thomas's mom and brother. His dad managed to survive. The photo shows Thomas's happy younger brother, but little did he know that his older brother literally had a plot to kill him. It's so disturbing. In our ninth spot, we have Victor Barrio. But before I go any further, if you guys are liking this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and of course, subscribe to our channel. Come on guys, it really helps us out. So hit that button, subscribe, ring that little bell. Victor Barrio was a 29 year old Spanish bullfighter. Sadly, on July 9th, 2016, his bullfighting days came to an end when a 529 kilogram bull's horn pierced through his chest. This moment was captured in front of a live audience and also was broadcasted on live TV. Some people managed to get photos as this happened and it's horrifying. You can see the look of pain on his face as the bull's horn just plunges through him. Like I feel so bad for him and for all the people that had to witness it. It's so scary. In our 8th spot we have the Panama Hikers. Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon were two young Dutch females that saved up to take a trip to Panama. Except while on a hike in the Panama Panamanian jungle, the two disappeared. It wasn't until months later that their bodies were found, but it's still unclear how the two died. The last photos taken of them were in April of 2014, the day that they went on the hike. They are selfies of the girls looking very excited to be on the trip. These photos were found on their camera, which was found in a backpack along the banks of a river. The camera also contained other pictures, like of the jungle in the dead of night. Maybe they were using the camera's flash as a source of light. Another Another photo showed the back of Chris's head and it was bleeding. Again, it's so scary looking at these photos. Like these poor young girls had no clue what was about to happen to them and they were so excited for their trip. Coming in at number seven, we have the drowning. On October 22nd, 2003, Tina Watson and her husband, David Gabriel, went out scuba diving on their honeymoon. They just got married 11 days earlier and scuba diving was part of their honeymoon itinerary. Now in this photo, if you look right at the back, you can see a dive laying on the sea floor. That's Tina Watson. A few minutes before this photo was taken, it's believed that her husband turned off her air supply and held her underwater until she drowned. Then he swam up to the surface to alert other divers that she was in trouble. The photo was captured accidentally and you can see the divers going to help Tina. Some say he held her underwater until she drowned. Others say he saw her struggling as a new scuba diver and just kind of left her there to die on her own. Either way, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and that was the last photo ever taken of her. In our sixth spot, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. In February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out to traverse the snowy mountains of Siberia. However, they all ended up mysteriously dying one by one. This photo was one of the last photos taken of them. Now, this case has been debated about for years, and there's tons of theories as to what happened to them. Some say they were hit by an avalanche at night and died from exposure. Others say a Yeti got them. In fact, there was a picture of a creature that looks like a Yeti found on one of the explorer's cameras. But it's a very odd case. Like their tent was found ripped open from the inside. Two bodies were found and they were only wearing underwear in the freezing cold. Another explorer's body was missing her tongue, eyes, and lips. And two of the other bodies had major chest fractures. To cause someone that much damage, it would be like equivalent to a car crash. And another hiker had a really high level of radiation on their clothes. It's just crazy. 
crazy, and to this day, we don't know what truly happened. We all have these theories, but the only ones that really know are the hikers in the photo. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the submarine murder. Back in August of 2013, freelance journalist Kim Wall got an interview with Danish inventor Peter Madsen. As part of the interview, Kim was set to take a trip on his homemade submarine. This photo shows Kim aboard the submarine just before her trip. Sadly, once inside, Peter killed her and dismembered her body. Why did he do this? Well, some say he became fascinated with murder and torture. Evidence showed that he had been watching videos of women being killed on his computer. And shortly before he beheaded Kim, he watched a video on it. So it was clear that he had a fascination with it. It's sad that Kim had to be his victim. In our fourth spot, we have the Facebook murder. A couple of hours after this picture was taken, Cheyenne Anton left, used the black belt she is seen wearing in that photo to strangle Brittany Gargle. The two were best friends, but apparently got into a heated argument and Cheyenne hit and strangled Brittany. Imagine taking a selfie with someone you thought you could trust just for them to go and kill you a couple hours later. It is so sick. Now, Cheyenne actually got away with this murder for two years until police finally found this photo on her Facebook and noticed that the belt that she was wearing was the same one found at the crime scene. She then pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to seven years in prison. Moving on to number three, we have parkour gone wrong. Pavel Kashin was known for his dangerous stunts and abilities. In 2013, he challenged himself to do a backflip on the edge of a 16 floor building. He successfully completed the backflip, but as he landed, he lost his footing and fell over the edge. He died instantly. This photo was captured by his friend while he was performing the stunt. You can see he's in midair doing his trick. Sadly, that was the last stunt he ever performed. And at number two, we have the stalker. On February of 2017, best friends Abby Williams and Libby German headed out for a hike in Indiana. This photo is of Abby Williams, taken right before they were both murdered. What's very disturbing is that in the background of these photos, you can literally see their killer lurking there. Apparently the man was stalking them for quite some time and in the girl's photo roll, they actually got some pictures of him, probably because they felt like he was following them. So in the last photo ever taken of Abby, you can literally see her killer behind her. It makes me so sick. Worst of all, he's never been caught. There's currently a reward for anyone that can identify the man though, so hopefully they can get some justice soon. And in our number one spot, we have the gruesome scene. This photo is going to send shivers down your spot. But before I show you, let me give you a quick backstory. So this photo was taken of Travis Alexander while he was taking a shower. It was taken by his girlfriend and murderer Jody shortly before she stabbed him 27 to 29 times. She also slit his throat nearly ear to ear and shot him in the head. It was a very gruesome and sinister murder. In this photo, you can see how uncomfortable Travis looks. It's almost as if he knew she was up to something. He looks absolutely terrified. Now the camera the camera that captured this photo was actually tossed into his washing machine as an attempt to destroy it. But it didn't work and some of the photos were still salvageable, like this one and one that she took of Travis's dead bloody body. I saw it, you don't wanna see it. And parkour gone wrong. I'm sure you've all seen an example of parkour before, but I would personally describe it as people launching themselves from one spot to the next, avoiding injury by the skin of their teeth. Often done outdoors, some of the maneuvers these people do are seemingly impossible. While it takes a lot of practice and coordination, this sport can also be super dangerous. Parkour daredevils like to take things quite literally to the next level, and as heights get higher and tricks get more technical, disaster is not far behind. Pavel Kashin was a Russian parkour artist who unfortunately learned his lesson the hard way. In 2013, he was performing a stunt on the rooftop of a 16-story building with a friend filming. They ended up capturing the final moments of Kashin's life. He was one of the well-known parkour artists or free runners being named one of the best in the world. He was known for his breakthrough stunts, which you can still find videos of today. On the day of his passing, Sheen was standing on a three foot wide ledge on the top of an apartment building. The daredevil decided to do a backflip on this very small ledge, with him completing the trick only to lose his footing on the landing and be sent over the edge. Kashin's fans and fellow members of the parkour community showed their support and sent respects to his family. His friends uploaded the final image of Pavel mid flip with the permission of his parents to the web. Kashin's parents hoped that the image would deter others from doing the same as their son. Number 9. Winterbine Fire If you've ever 
ever seen a wind turbine in real life before, you will know just how massive the energy converting monsters actually are. In October 2013, two workers were doing routine maintenance to a 67 meter high turbine in Oltingsplat, Netherlands. Don't come for me, I know I butchered that name, but while they were doing this maintenance, a fire broke out quickly engulfing the only escape route, trapping the workers high above the ground. Due to the height of the fire, the firefighters had a hard time reaching the fire to put it out, so a specialized crew of firefighters were called in with a large crane. Unfortunately, this took hours, which the technicians did not have. In their last moments, a photo of the tragedy was snapped, and in it you can see the turbine in a blaze, but you can also see the two workers embracing in their final moments. The image just amplifies how big the turbine actually is and shows how hopeless a rescue mission would have been. The men were just 19 and 21 at the time. One tried one last effort to survive, with one man jumping from the wind turbine in the last effort to save himself, and the other tried to scale down the side, only to be caught up in the blaze. The man who jumped was found in a field next to the turbine, and the other was found when firefighters were able to finally climb to the turbine. The cause of the fire is unknown, but believed to be a short circuit. While this free accident ended up taking two lives, the tragedy led to a political inquiry into safety precautions for wind turbine maintenance crews. Their final photo together was sad, but it was nice that in their final moments they did have each other. Number 8. Racing to Disaster Gary Box was one of the many firefighters who was there on 9-11 risking it all in order to save lives. Unfortunately, he was also one of the many who never made it home after that day. Hours before heroically losing his life, Box was photographed racing towards the disaster. The image was taken in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel by a pedestrian in their car. Their engine got stuck in the traffic of the tunnel, so in full gear carrying as much as they could, Box and the rest of his crew started running on foot to ground zero. Gary was 35 at the time and his remains were never recovered. All images taken that day I'm sure have something haunting about them, but knowing how little time he had left is another level. At number 7, Ronaldo Dexa. He was a Filipino politician, a member of the peacekeeping action team, and a corporal in the Philippine Army Reserve Command. Now this photo is not of Dagsa before he passed, but due to how haunting it is, I still had to include it. His passing achieved notoriety due to the picture he snapped of his family on New Year's with unbelievable timing. The image Dagsa captured also inadvertently captured the man who was about to take the shot that would ultimately take his life. The photo was extremely helpful when it came to investigators identifying the shooter because the image shows the gunman quite literally seconds before taking the fatal shot. The picture was taken outside the councilman's house in Metropolitan Manila. The photo led to a quick arrest of the shooter as well as his accomplice. Apparently the suspects were known car thieves out on bail, likely holding a grudge against Dexa who had the men arrested a year earlier. It is extremely sad that Dexa unknowingly captured his own final moments, especially with his family being right there, but at least they were able to use it to catch the gunman. Number 6. Discount Flight Keith Sapsard was from Randwick, New South Wales. He passed away just 14 years old with his final moments caught on camera. On February 22, 1970, the teen snuck onto the tarmac at Sydney Airport in Australia with the idea to hide inside a Tokyo bound plane in order to run away. Unfortunately, Sapsford would never make it to Tokyo. His father described Keith as a curious kid who always had an urge to keep on the move. Due to his restlessness, his parents decided to send him to Boys Town, a Roman Catholic institution specializing in troubled children, for some some discipline and structure. Instead, Sapsford escaped from the facility after a couple weeks and headed to the airport. Thanks to the far more relaxed regulations and security of the 70s, Sapsford was able to sneak onto the tarmac with ease. It's unknown if Keith knew where the plane was headed, but he saw a plane preparing for boarding and climbed into its wheel well. It took a few hours for the plane to take off, but eventually it made its way to the sky. What Keith didn't know was that the plane was going to reopen the wheel compartments to retract the wheels. When this happens, Sapsford fell out of the plane, falling 200 feet. One of the craziest things about this tragic event was by pure coincidence. Photographer John Gilpin was simply taking pictures at the airport when he unknowingly snapped a pic at the exact same time Sapsford was falling from the plane. I bet when he developed that roll of film, he was totally surprised. His father later said, All my son wanted to do was see the world. He had itchy feet and his determination to see how the rest of the world lives cost him his life. Obviously, what happened to Keith was a tragedy 
tragedy, but the photo captured by Gilpin is remarkable as well as haunting. At number five, Fatal Friend. Brittany Gargle and Cheyenne Antoine were the best of friends until they weren't. Apparently, Brittany was extremely hardworking. At 16, she was juggling school and two jobs. Antoine had a rough upbringing with her parents falling into substance use. Cheyenne grew up in foster care. At 15, Antoine's mother passed away, and to cope with the news, she got involved with some dangerous company, also falling into substance use. That's when the two girls met, and Brittany helped Cheyenne manage her feelings, and the two became close. On March 25th, 2015, Brittany posted a picture of her and Cheyenne on social media. The two planned to go out for drinks and have fun, but as the night went on, things got out of hand and the details became fuzzy. The girls traveled to a pub, then to a house party, and then one more pub. Cheyenne claimed that around 4 a.m., Brittany asked a man for a lighter and invited him for drinks, but she didn't know what happened later. Cheyenne heard nothing from Brittany the next day, and later the police received a 911 call of a woman lying on her back, cold to the touch. The woman was identified as Brittany. Cheyenne was questioned and her story checked out, but the police thought she was hiding something. As the police dug further, more details came out. In the end, Brittany's passing was ruled a strangling, and this led to oh my god, and this led them to a crucial lead. It was the picture Cheyenne had posted on social media the night of the events. In it, Cheyenne was wearing a stylish black belt, the same belt that had been found at the crime scene. In 2017, after all the evidence collected, Cheyenne was arrested for taking Brittany's life, with Cheyenne claiming not to remember anything due to the substances. In the end, Cheyenne was sentenced to seven years in prison with her release in 2024. At number four, the final dive. Nicholas Mavoli was an American free diver who passed doing what he loved, but not before taking a picture that will give you the chills. Mavoli began free diving competitively in 2012, winning titles twice at the Deja Blue competition and finishing third at the Caribbean Cup in Honduras. With much success in his newfound passion, Mavoli only wanted to take things even further. On November 15, 2013, he prepared to dive into Dean's Blue Hole, hoping to reach 72 meters on a single inhalation with no fins or supplemental oxygen. Surrounded by 15 other athletes and observers, as well as five safety divers, he submerged face first, looking like a human arrow diving into the darkness that would ultimately end up being his last dive. Mike Board, free diving record holder, said diving into a depth with no fins, that's a hard physical dive. I was thinking, okay, he's going to have a hard time getting up. Yet, after a dive of 3 minutes and 38 seconds, Mavoli shot back up to the surface. Unfortunately, instead of celebrating the dive, things quickly turned into a nightmare. Mavoli ripped off his goggles, flashed the OK sign, and attempted to complete surface protocol that would make the attempt official by saying, I am OK. But he wasn't. His words came out jumbled and his eyes were wide and blank. This moment was captured on camera, and the blank fear in the diver's eyes is frightening. Frightening. He lost consciousness and never regained it after suffering a pulmonary edema. Number 3. Dytov Pass Mystery The Dytov Pass incident was the event in which nine Soviet trekkers passed away in the northern Ural Mountains between February 1st and 2nd, 1959, in uncertain circumstances. There are many theories as to what caused the tragedy, but ultimately, it's a mystery. The experienced trekking group from the Yuri Polytechnic Institute was led by Igor Dytov. Overnight, something seemingly caused the group to cut their way out of their tent from inside and flee the campsite. While them cutting open their tent from the inside is confusing enough, the bodies found were improperly dressed for the heavy snowfall and the freezing temperatures. As the story goes on, things only get further from making sense. After the bodies were discovered, Soviet authorities determined that six had passed from hypothermia, while the other three suffered physical trauma. One had major skull damage, two severe chest trauma, and another had a small skull fracture. Four of the bodies were found lying in a creek, and three of those bodies had soft tissue damage to the head and face. Two bodies were missing eyes, one missing a tongue, and another had missing eyebrows. Now, if it had just been the hypothermia, this case would be totally different. But what the heck did all this physical damage in the middle of nowhere? While we aren't sure exactly what went down, there are lots of pictures of the group's final days as well as plenty of theories. There was a new investigation opened in 2019 calling it an avalanche, but I don't know still. Does an avalanche really remove your tongue and eyeballs? Number 2. A Miracle of the Andes On October 13, 
1972, Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, chartered by an amateur rugby team, crashed into the Andes Mountains. The wreckage of the crash was not located for more than two months. There were only 16 out of 45 who survived the whole thing, with the incident gaining international attention after it was revealed the survivors had resorted to cannibalism. Due to the bad weather, the pilot of the plane misjudged their location, and the plane ended up striking a mountain, losing both wings before crashing into a remote valley of Argentina, near the Chilean border. A search party was sent out, but due to the white plane on the white snow, it was unable to be spotted from above. After eight days, the search was called off, thinking there were no survivors, though later rescue efforts were taken over by family. There were initially 33 survivors, but due to the elements, injuries, and an avalanche, the numbers were shrinking. Several survivors surveyed the area for an escape route. On December 12th, almost exactly two months since the crash, three men set out to go find help. Though one did return to the crash site after a difficult trek, the other two men finally came across some people. It was December 20th now, and the people they found alerted the authorities. On December 22nd, six survivors were flown to safety, but bad weather meant the remaining eight waited and until the 23rd. There are photos from both before the crash of the group. There are photos from both before the crash of the group on the plane and after of the group surrounding the fallen plane, as well as books and a movie about the incident. And at number one, a solo hike. In 2014, two women, Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froon, were visiting Panama from the Netherlands, and on April 1st, they went on a walk through the scenic forest near the Baru volcano, only to never return. Alarm was raised the day after they didn't return from their hike, and a search party was sent out right away, only to find no sign of Kremers or Froon. A while later, a local woman found Froon's backpack. In the bag, they found her camera, two pairs of sunglasses, some cash, her passport, a water bottle, two bras, and both the women's phones. Probably the most concerning they found were the final images taken on the camera. All of the photos from April 1st are just the two women exploring the jungle. Then there are no pictures until April 8th, when 90 unsettling pictures were taken with the flash in the middle of the jungle timestamp between 1 and 4 a.m. Most of these images are of complete darkness and the jungle floor, but there are two very alarming pics. One shows some of the women's belongings on a rock, and the other looks like the back of Kremer's head with what appears to be blood stain in her hair. Something else suspicious about the camera is that image 509 was missing, with 508 being the last of them looking okay, and image 510 being the first in the darkness days later. They found a pelvic bone and a foot still inside a boot. Froon's bones appeared to decompose naturally, but Kremer seemed to be stark white as if they'd been bleached, further leading to question if someone else was involved. The first image is a screen grab from a video filmed by a U.S. Marine officer on the 20th of April in 2021 on a military base in 29 Palms, California. After the release of the photograph, multiple Marines came forward to confirm the existence of an aircraft, seeing that while the photo showcases only the triangle-shaped formation of bright lights, in person the men were able to make out the black body of the aircraft as well. The unidentified flying object is said to have hovered for 10 minutes in the air before it suddenly vanished without any trace. The men were able to rule out flares for being the cause of the mysterious lights, but were never able to figure out exactly what they saw that night. However, it appears the footage has not been taken lightly as the Pentagon has started an investigation into just what exactly was seen on the night of April 20th of 2021 in the skies above the 29 Bombs military base. Next up, we have a series of photographs taken by cosmonaut Ivan Vanger in August of 2020 whilst aboard the International Space Station that appears to depict five unidentified flying objects flying at the same speed while maintaining the same distance between each other as well as their surroundings, moving in a straight line just above the Earth's curved horizon visible in the night sky. Vanger, both surprised and curious, took to Twitter, now named X, to share the footage in hopes of getting some clarity as to exactly what he was looking at. In an exciting unfolding of events, his tweet was picked up by the Russian space agency Roscosmos, and a spokesperson revealed that experts were in fact studying the video in an attempt to determine what exactly Vanguar had managed to capture. Did you guys know that Japan was a major hotbed for UFO activity? Because I didn't. But apparently the Pentagon does? In fact, UFO sightings are so common in Japan that its military has reportedly ordered all pilots to 
just close any and all identified flying objects directly to the Japanese government. Not only that, but Japanese self-defense forces have also undergone extensive training in relation to UFO sighting protocol. To date, six alleged encounters between pilots and UFOs have been reported to the Japanese government, one of which was recorded, and depicts 10 white circular balls flying through the skies of Osaka in Japan. While the government has yet to publicly comment on any of the incidents, the update of self-defense protocol alone is pretty telling. The next image was shared by a pretty reputable source, National Geographic. The image was captured by Sergio Loaiza on September 4th of 1971 during an aerial survey of Lake Kote. Everything seemed pretty normal until the photos were taken back to Loaiza's development lab where he noticed something very strange. A metallic flying aircraft, estimated to have a diameter of 160 feet, was located in the corner of one of the photographs. When he presented the photos to his superiors at the National Geographic Institute, they shut him down quick, forbidding Sergio as well as his colleagues from sharing any information of what they had seen that day. In 1979, however, the photograph was leaked, and the object that appeared in the image was officially classified as an unidentified flying object. In 2021, the existence of the object was again confirmed after the original copy of the photograph was scanned and it was revealed that the UFO's presence was more than just a scratch on the lens or a piece of dust in the wind. So what do you think it was? Let us know in the comments. Next up we have footage that comes to us straight from the declassifieds. Remember how I told you at the beginning of the video that the government quite literally copped to the fact that they have been hiding the existence of UFOs for years? Well, they did and they came with receipts. On the 15th of January in 2023, while surveilling an MQ-9 Reaper aircraft, an unidentified aerial presence was captured, moving at speeds unreachable by any of Earth's modern day technological advances. Not only this, but as the object whizzed through the field of view of the camera lens, it appeared to leave behind an atmospheric wake before disappearing completely into the sky. Guys, if you have any, please leave your UFO and alien stories in the comments. I would love to hear about your experiences with any of these kind of things. Next up, we have arguably the most beautiful alien assuming photograph I have ever seen. The photo was taken in 2004 by a retired Royal Air Force officer while on vacation in Sri Lanka. The site was described is some kind of colorful giant donut in the sky with hues of oranges, pinks, purples, and whites. After its capture, the photograph was turned into the Royal Air Force Flying Dales Base in North Yorkshire in England, where it became a classified document held by the Ministry of Defense. The image has since been declassified, of course, and is now available for public viewing, but there is still a lot of mystery surrounding the photo as well as the photographer, as his identity, along with any other information regarding the incident is pretty much non-existent. I mean, come on, it's a giant glowing light in the sky. You're really telling me no one else saw this and that there's no other information out there other than the fact that the photo exists? Oh, yeah, and not only that, but it was deemed classified by the British Ministry of Defense, so I'm thinking there's something else going on here. Okay, I bet you didn't know that another major hotbed for extraterrestrial UFO and unidentified aerial phenomenon activity was Brazil. I mean, I did, but maybe you didn't. In fact, this kind of thing is so popular in Brazil that they have an annual day of recognition for these sightings known as the Night of the UFO, which came to be after a major event took place in 1986. On the night of May 19th, a series of unidentified flying objects were seen in the skies of Brazil, and even more non-visual objects were detected via radar across the skies of four Brazilian states. Of course, at this time, any and all knowledge the government had on the event was extremely classified. In May of 2012, however, Brazil's Freedom of Information Act went into place, after which the public demanded the release of all the documents relating to the incident. The government complied, and not only released written documents of the events, but also a series of photographs depicting strange activity within the skies above Brazil. Although the images of what appeared to be nothing more than squiggles and clouds of smoke didn't provide much clarity, a statement made by the Minister of Aeronautics did. He said, This command is of the opinion that the phenomena are solid and reflect, in a certain way, intelligence, due to the ability to follow and maintain a distance from observers, as well as to fly in formation. After this statement was made, the Brazilian government has still not been able to confirm exactly what took place the day the night of the UFOs 
was born. Next, we have a photo taken in 1990 by two Scottish chefs who were working in a hotel near the area in which the photograph was taken. After a long day of work, it appears the two men had decided to take a hike in an attempt to blow off some steam. While this walk wouldn't end up being incredibly relaxing, it would be wildly exciting as not long after the two men had set off on their journey along the Calvine Scottish countryside, they noticed something hovering above them in the sky. The object was not one that either of the men could identify and so they pulled out their cameras in an attempt to document the 100-foot flying aircraft instead. The photos, which have been analyzed and show no signs of manipulation, capture the object being circled by a jet plane. They thought the incident was incredibly strange and even newsworthy, so the two turned the footage over to the local newspaper for publication. But the images were seized by the British Ministry of Defense and were never released. Until 32 years later, that is, by David Clark, who, unbeknownst to the ministry, had kept a photocopy of one of the original images. The identity of the two men was never revealed, nor did they ever come forward to share their story after the images had been seized by the ministry, begging the question of what exactly they saw and what exactly the government was trying to cover up. A photograph taken of an unidentified aircraft lit up by military spotlights in Los Angeles, California is next on the list. The photograph, which documents an event so big, it later became referred to as the Battle of Los Angeles or the Great Los Angeles Air Raid was taken on February 23rd of 1942, just two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. On the night the photo was taken, all of Los Angeles was under blackout, as directed by the US military. While the lights on the ground had been turned off, the sky above had been lit up by a myriad of strange objects. The military opened fire, and onlookers stood absolutely stunned as 1,400 rounds of ammunition appeared to have no effect effect on the unidentified flying object. Smoke filled the sky, and when it cleared, not a single craft was to be found in the sky or on the ground. Shrapnel that appeared to have ricocheted off the target resulted in the death of five civilians. Furthermore, three were killed in car accidents due to the chaos of the event, and two more of heart attacks due to the stress of the two hour long attack. And finally, we have a handful of screen grabs from a video taken by Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich whilst flying an 18F Super Hornet fighter jet over the Pacific Ocean near San Diego during a training mission for the United States Navy. The footage, taken in November of 2004, was captured after Dietrich was asked to investigate a suspicious object that had been seen dropping from 80,000 feet down to the surface of the ocean and then vanishing. When Alex and their colleague arrived on the scene, the ocean surface, where the object had been reported, appeared as though it was boiling. Moments after arriving to investigate, a strange, elongated white object came into view and was captured on video hovering above the water before it disappeared into the sky at an impossible speed, leaving no wake in the oceans below. While the footage has been confirmed to be authentic by the United States Department of Defense, the object itself, along with its origins, remains a mystery. Let's start number 10, William Thomas Dead. Born in 1849, William Thomas Stead was the son of Congregationalist minister, and at the age of 22, he was appointed as editor of the Northern Echo, a regional newspaper in Darlington. This British medium, Richard Borsonal, featured a photo of W.T. Stead and a spirit. Or a demon. One of the two, both pretty terrifying. While William was investigating a spiritual case, he took this photo with what's supposed to be the spirit of Pete Botha. Now, the reason many believe that maybe the spirit is evil is that Stead later on died in the Titanic. He boarded the ship to take part in a peace congress at Carnegie Hall, and survivors mentioned William Thomas Stead a few times. Apparently, at dinner, he was chatting his way throughout the entire 11 course meal, recounting exciting, spooky times in his life, even mentioning a cursed mummy that he encountered at the British Museum once. That's a little odd for table talk. He even gave his life jacket to another passenger that night too. Stead would often claim that he would one day pass due to hanging or to drowning. And right before he was to be awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize, he passed away due to the latter. Was he cursed? I believe so, to be honest with you. What do you guys think? Number nine, the demonic boy photograph. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've probably seen this photo at some point. All those late nights when you're scrolling through Reddit, you've probably seen this at some point. I know I have, and every time I see it, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks pretty real, it's pretty haunting. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something scary and real. Like you want to find something that looks fake about the photo, but it's tough. 
This photo was taken inside the Amityville house in 1976. It appears to be a young boy or ghost, spirit, demon, whatever, with glowing white eyes. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. And it makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Like he knew something was coming almost, he didn't want to get caught. That's the creepiest part here. A photographer named Gene Campbell took it, and Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at the time. Yeah, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring universe. This was a real thing. They were on this case in real life. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken, and it was revealed on the Merv Griffin show. Imagine seeing this on a show, like Jimmy Kimmel whips this out. It's like, hey, we're gonna play Plinko. Check out this demon. Many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior during the 1974 event. Now we're still trying to cover this one, but what do you guys think? Is this an elaborate hoax? Is this a young boy? Or is this one of the many demons that was said to haunt the house? Sound off down below. Number eight, the SS Watertown. This picture here perhaps is one of the creepiest on this list. I'm not sure what to think of this one. It comes from 1924 and it shows what appears to be two older men or two older figures almost. I don't know, it's water, it's hard to tell. Some believe it's James Courtney and Michael Meehan in the water. Now the two had previously died and were buried at sea, hence that's why their first thought was them as to who it was. Other crew members saw these strange faces in the water as well. So when they turned back to get another look, five out of the six photos showed nothing. This was the only photo that showed what they saw. Are these the two lost crewmen or is the vessel haunted by sinister forces? Number seven, backseat driver. This photo is from 1959. Okay, it was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery. And the photo at first glance is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now the man in the back seat, however, that back left seat, we have no idea who that was. Her husband apparently was the only guy in the car at the time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, like try this. This is a really hard shot, even with phones now. It would be hard back in the day. It's like he's appearing to us through the seat almost with that angle. So either this is a lie, which happens often, people can't can lie and a man was sitting in the back left seat or like Mabel thinks maybe this is her dead mother-in-law. Now if she had said father-in-law I think maybe it was his spirit but this for sure looks like an older gentleman with a collar or something. Kind of looks like uh, dare I say it the devil. I don't know I read a lot of comic books. Number six Coventry Society Demon. You may be thinking some of these may not be demons Taylor maybe they're just nice spirits who stuck around after they passed. Yeah while it's nice to believe that photos like this convince me otherwise. This is from the Coventry Freeman Society and it shows everybody at this event dressed to the nines. But when you look at the top left corner over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room at this event. Nobody else was seen also at any point at that night wearing a hood like this. So of course many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife photobombing this event. Honestly, I totally believe that. This is a weird one. The hood, it's... I, maybe I've been watching Harry Potter lately. I don't know. Maybe it's a Dementor. We actually don't know. Number five. The ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost. I included it, it's kind of nice, but you never really know, honestly. This one, I did some research, it's creepy. Any sort of spirit, I don't welcome. Yeah, I don't gamble on the afterlife. I'm actually all set. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987. A woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England, so of course, she did the classic tourist thing and got a photo in the cockpit. We all do it at some point, but do you ever think of who may have died in that exact spot before? After the age of 10 years old, I was like, you know what? I understand ghosts. I'm not gonna sit in that tank. I'm good, thanks. People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. Now, next time you wanna sit in the pilot's seat, look around for spirits, because this image was developed and it appears that somebody or something was in the helicopter with Miss Sayer the whole time. Number four, the Paris Demon. Originally, the tunnels under Paris were built for stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. Cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, and humans didn't figure out how to be clean, so bodies would just be laying on the sides of the roads. They started to pile up over time, so the solution was to use these catacombs. They were no longer needed for those mines anymore, so might as well use them as a mass graveyard. And now we have the scariest basement in the world. We have walls of skulls that on one hand, it's cool as hell, it's natural history, it's gothic, yet beautiful, but when Google Maps tried to give a user an up-close look, it seemed to have caught a shadowy demon figure. With more than six million souls laying down there, it doesn't shock me to hear about something like this at all. There's a video of the street view and in it you can see this figure. Check it out yourself. Number three, demons are us. 
For this next one, we'll be going down the Lego aisle. Yeah, how fun. Haunted Toys R Us. Can you imagine all those toys starting up at night by themselves? Boom. Bay Area's Haunted Toys R Us is no longer a thing. Thankfully, as of 2018, that location closed down, but its tales, they live on forever. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demonic presence appeared in the background of this photo. But of course, like others on this list, the people present at the time of the photo swear that nobody else was there. It's like everyone has bad memory, everyone has good memory, I can't really tell right now. It's like, mm, could this be a spirit or a demon caught on tape that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I vote yes. Employees talked about creepy things happening there at night all the time, and the Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. That's what people say. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood, so many think the spirit is the ghost of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, the fact that Ouija boards are a toy, a toy that is commonly used to, I don't know, communicate with spirits, maybe closing these doors was the best call. I don't think we welcomed in any good spirits. I don't think any spirits are clocking in for work, you know what I mean? And now it's closed, so I'm like, it didn't work. Whatever we tried, didn't work. Number two, ghost boots. These boots are made for haunting, and that's just what they'll do. Yeah, I put a pair of boots on this list. That's where we're at now. This photo of a young girl may look like a classic family trip, but upon closer inspection, it seems like somebody or something is standing behind her. Now, of course, her father said that nobody was behind her at the time that it was taken, and I agree, that, and like, honestly, and I believe him. Honestly, that would be pretty weird if he was like, hey, can you stand right here? Yeah, are you behind my daughter? Don't move, but you stand right here in this open field. Thanks. Kaching. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's weird. This shot was taken at Zushi Zenigawa, Japan, and you can see boots and what looks like clothing sticking out from behind the child's elbow. The kid's father said, I took a few photos, and when I was looking through them at night, I noticed the boots behind her. I took several photos in the same spot, but only one of them had boots. You always see that in movies, right? At night, they're going through, and they see, like, it's 2 a.m. It's never at a Walmart while it's being developed. They don't find these photos in a bright, busy area. It's always in, like, a dark kitchen. Ugh, it's creepy. So he freaked out, and then put it on Reddit, and then now. We're here, full circle. And finally, coming in at number one, cave drawings. I know these aren't photos, but come on, there's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin, right? Let's do it, let's go back, let's turn the clocks back. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. These Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at. They were created from humans about 20,000 years ago, and it's now considered a heritage site. There's many of these caves around the world. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there in the Lascaux Caves and taking a look yourself, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. Learning about our history is challenging, and when it's slowly fading away, that surely doesn't help. Just gotta hold your breath while you read? This is crazy. I'm currently reading a book called Supernatural by Graham Hancock, and in it, he tries to dig through history to find the origins of spirituality, and markings in caves like these ones from ages ago definitely help. They resemble these demon-looking creatures almost, and this is long before religion. These drawings were supposedly from hallucinations, but many believe it's one of the first accounts of a demon interacting with a human. It's just drawn on a cave wall. Peck Merle is a cave in France that also has these strange drawings, and some say they resemble aliens, others, of course, voting demons. What do you guys think? This is from 25,000 years ago. If you enjoyed these disturbing last photographs, then you have to check out this video next. It's about skinwalker encounters that will haunt your nightmares. Click the video now to find out more about this absolutely chilling topic. See you in the next video.